Welcome to My Big Fat Fabulous Life Slipping Through My Fingers episode. Hey Terry, I'm sorry this one's late. I was live the other night and forgot to record it. So then I had to wait and record it later. And then yesterday was Thanksgiving. So here we go. This episode I thought was a little dull, but I think it's because I have to set up what's going to happen for the rest of the season. It starts off with Whitney and her mom. I love her and her mom together. They're so dang cute. Um, reminds me a lot of me and my daughter because we're so close. And uh, yeah, so then why I was just searching around the internet, I found this modeling picture of Whitney's mom. What the heck? I didn't know she, her mom was a model. Look at that picture. She is just stunning. Not to say she isn't now. But I was like, holy cow, look at that. Babs was quite the looker. <laughs> I think her mom has some hidden secrets that we don't know about. But I thought it was really cute, too, the restaurant scene where um, Whitney and Chase are fighting about where the wedding's going to be. And her mom says, well, you know, you could have the wedding in the mountains and have the honeymoon at the beach. And both Whitney and Chase are like, oh, yeah, we could do that. Hello. <laughs> I think Whitney and Chase aren't good at compromise at all. They're probably both very lucky this wedding got called off because it probably would have been a one-year marriage with a divorce soon after. So, in my opinion, Whitney really dodged a bullet here for sure. There's a lot in this show about the illness that we're not supposed to talk about on YouTube. I know they have to have it in there, but I don't know about you guys, but I feel like enough already. I feel like it hasn't been long enough. We all just live this. Now we have to live it again while we're still living it. It, it gets me a little frustrated with all the shows I'm watching that we have to go over and over the beginning of it. I know it's just me. It just, I don't know. It irritates me. It's like overload or something. But I know they have to have it in the shows because that was part of their lives at the time. But I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> then we get Whitney finally goes to see Chase's bar, which I still think it's so weird she had never been to see his bar. Maybe they were just waiting until they could film it. It doesn't seem very supportive of your partner to have never seen their new business that they opened. I don't know. I think it must be a filming thing. But anyway, she doesn't seem real impressed with the bar, that's for sure. And I think she knew this was... She even says in the episode there was lots of fighting before she went there to see the bar. So you can tell there's a lot of tension. And I know I'm still getting a lot of comments that her whole relationship with Chase was fake. But I don't believe that. I really don't. Number one, if, they, if it was fake, they would have got a way better actor. Because Chase is not great on camera. He's just not. He's very uncomfortable, just like most people that have never been on camera would be. So I don't see where they brought this guy in for a fake relationship. They would have got somebody way better at acting. I just don't think it would have been Chase. Nah, I think it was a real relationship for sure. Now, again, I think some scenes are scripted. I think the whole beach scene... With her losing the ring was scripted. I really do. I don't think that was a real scene. I mean, she does seem sincere crying at the end of it, but I could see where Whitney could bring on tears because they had had a lot of tension between them anyway. And my thing is, even if that was real and she really did have the ring slip off, wouldn't that ring have been insured? Because that looked like a pretty expensive ring to me. And it's not like Whitney and Chase are little kids. They would have known to insure the ring, right? Now, I will say I lost a ring at the beach almost the same way. Years ago, I was at the beach with my sister. And we were sitting on the beach, but the water was coming up on us. And I lost my sweet 16 ring that my dad had given me years and years ago. And I cried my eyes out. And it was the, the water came up and it just slipped right off my hand. Because, you know, your fingers shrink, and I didn't realize it, and that ring was gone. And I was brokenhearted. So, yeah, it does happen. I get that. But I don't know. It seemed really contrived. 
You guys will have to let me know what you think down in the comments. Did she really lose that ring? Because there's just not a whole lot to talk about in this episode, while I was searching around on the internet, <laughs> I saw that her and Ryan are no longer business partners. Big surprise. Who could have predicted that? Pretty much everybody. <laughs> I never thought her and Ryan were a good match. And anybody that's watched my videos know I always say, never take on a business partner ever. It never works. It doesn't work. Just run your business. Unless, the only way I could see where it would work is if you had a silent partner that just invested money but had nothing to do with anything else. So, of course, I've seen now her and Ryan have split. There's no way that could have kept working. And like I said, they weren't even like-minded in how to run the business. So, in my opinion, Ryan was just using her to get on camera and get on the show. I truly feel that way. He He was not at all on the same wavelength of her of the no body shame. I feel like he's a body shamer from the word go, in my opinion. That's just how I feel. So now she's running her new business with Jessica, which makes a lot more sense. But I still say, don't take on a partner. So we'll see how long this lasts with Jessica. They're not posting much on their Instagram, just a few posts. So maybe, I don't know, with Corona, but but isn't all their stuff done online? So that shouldn't really matter. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes with Jessica. But then I did think it was kind of cute on her Instagram. I found a picture of her with a poodle. So it looks like the poodle dream did come true. She got her a big poodle. I just, I worry a little bit about his coat. You guys know I'm a dog person. And I get really upset when people don't do poodle coats correctly. There are a lot of maintenance. That's my big problem with the Labradoodles because people don't maintain their coats. But uh, maybe they were just between appointments because I get that happens too. That happens with my schnauzer. So I'm not going to go too hard on her until I see that the dog is always looking like this. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a big animal advocate, so I have to say something. But I am really happy for her that she got her poodle and... Um, Hopefully they're happy together and she has somebody new to take care of since the whole thing with Chase went and uh, disintegrated. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments of this episode. I just thought it was a real dud. Was it? But like I said, I guess they got to set up the rest of the season. So they had to show the fighting and him refusing to move, her refusing to move. Which, to me, I mean, if you guys are so much in love, somebody should have gave in. So she's probably lucky it didn't happen. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Be sure to hit the like button. And have a wonderful day.